What's up, my comic comrades? Today we continue our coverage of the Batman movie with the movie's key villain, the Riddler. Edward Nigma is, of course, one of Batman's most notorious rogues, but this is the first time the character has gotten the big screen treatment since 1995 when Jim Carrey brought us his very, shall we say, colorful portrayal in Batman Forever. We actually brought you guys a teaser for the Riddler during this past Villains Month with an episode looking at his origin, which you could find right here. But we're returning to give the character the full treatment with a look at his story arcs, powers and abilities, reading recs, and more. So without further ado, let's talk about the Riddler. was created by Bill Finger and Dick Spring and first appeared in Detective Comics issue 140 in October of 1948. The Riddler is one of Batman's deadliest adversaries because of his vast intellect. He uses said intellect to leave deadly puzzles and riddles around Gotham for Batman and the police to solve to prove his intellectual superiority. There's nothing more the Riddler strives for than proving he is smarter than the Dark Knight. He is easily one of Batman's top five villains in my and I'm sure many of your opinions. He is the villain that more so than most proves that Batman is the world's greatest detective constantly challenging Batman to solve his insane riddles, puzzles, and brain teasers. In short, Riddler is a psychological villain, which is one of the most dangerous types of villains there is. Which is why I'm so happy to see what Matt Reeves and Paul Dano, who's playing him, does with the character. As it seems like we're going to be getting the psychological thriller version of Riddler I've always wanted to see on the big screen. But with all that said, let's take a look at the Riddler's comic book origin. As for the Riddler's origin, the most well-received origin for the character was given to us in Year One Detective Comics Annual 8 in 1995. So obviously, that's the one we're going to break down here today. In the issue, the Riddler is telling us and some unknown character in the issue his origin, saying, this is the story of Edward Nigma. It's my story. It all began on the tree-shaded streets of Waterbury. We are then given flashbacks from his childhood as we see Edward as a young boy asking his mom, why are leaves green? She answers, because. He asks, because why? His mother then tells him, ask your father. What she does, but his father responds, how the hell should I know? Go bug somebody else, I'm busy. We then see a young Edward ask a school crossing guard and they tell him, I don't know, chlorophyll or something. Nigma asks, what's that? The crossing guard then says, look, are you gonna cross the street or what? We then get more narration from the Riddler saying, adults didn't have the answers, or maybe they forgot them. I was determined to be the guy with all the answers, even if I had to make up the questions. We are then taken into Edward's sixth grade class where his teacher is saying, children, a very special assignment for you. A puzzle. It's a game, but it's also a test. Tomorrow you'll each be taken in turn to the teacher's lounge. A gentleman will be there to monitor you. He wants to see how quickly you could put this puzzle together. The students who put the puzzle together in the fastest time will be honored at next week's assembly. And not only that, the winner will receive a prize. We see Edward doodling in his notebook as the teacher is saying this, but when he hears that the winner will receive a prize, his eyes light up as his curiosity is now sparked. Because he wants that prize. He then goes to ask the teacher, what is the puzzle of? She tells him that would be cheating, Freddy. He then tells her, my name is Eddie, while saying under his breath, big fat cow. We then see Eddie playing on the playground by himself, looking up at the teacher's lounge, saying, story of my life, you know, I was a cipher, nobody, beneath the notice of even the school bullies. But I could solve the puzzle, the prize, the recognition. The other kids would remember my name. They'd sit with me at lunch. We are then taken back to the present, where the Riddler is sitting in a room saying, but what chance did I have? A mediocre student, a faceless kid, as forgettable as the capital of Idaho. Tell you a secret, I'm an only child. Lots of times I hear my parents fighting, and one night I crawled out of of bed and listen. They were blaming each other for something. Really going at it. Dishes and pans flying. We then see Riddler look up at us, the reader, saying, you know what? They were blaming each other for me. But you gotta say... That's all kinds of messed up. I mean, that's the fruit of your loins. We are then taken back to the past where the Riddler keeps narrating his childhood, saying there was only one way I could beat the others. And it was then I found my true calling in life cheating. As we see him break into the teacher's lounge at night, as he says, I put the puzzle together after 30 minutes, and then 15, then 10, then 5. I assembled the puzzle six times in a row in under one minute. I thought that would easily earn me the prize. And guess what? It did. The Riddler then tells us, but all that glory is fleeting. A week later, I was a nobody again. Everything was the same as it was, except that the bullies now noticed me as we see them beating him up. We then see that the prize Edward won was a book on puzzles, riddles, and games for every occasion, with Riddler narrating saying, a book, more like a doorway actually. I devoured it with the kind of attention I never wasted on my studies. It made me hungry for more. I had to know everything there was to know about puzzles and traps and trickery. My favorite subject was the great Houdini. Old Harry and I share a talent. We both cheat. We then see Edward performing magic for the kids while saying, the secret to good tricks is fixing the solution ahead of time. Skill of sleight of hand is important. Flash forward over the years, Edward realized he didn't get any thrill from winning by cheating or fooling people anymore. As he tells us, 
Where was the trip? Where was the respect? Simple theft wasn't a game. It was a job. I was going to have to establish a style. It's at this point we see him leave his very first clue at a GCPD precinct. As he tells us at first, the cleverness wasn't appreciated. As we see him robbing a teller at a bank with the lady saying, what are you waiting for? Here's the cash, you nut. But Edward tells her, actually, I was expecting somebody. As he was expecting, the police would figure out the clue and come looking for him to give him a challenge. The Riddler then tells us, I had to work harder to get their attention. As we see an officer say, yo, Lieutenant, I think there's a package for you. As we see a green box covered in question marks. But as he puts the box down on James's desk, it explodes, releasing clues that come falling down with parachutes. One of the officers then asks, what do you make of this, Jim? Jim replies, trouble, while looking at a clue that says the Riddler on the back. So Jim gathers several of his men and goes where the clues lead, saying to them the riddles were specific. He wants us here, the Lighthouse Club, on March 4th, and it's a minute to 30. And a moment after he finishes his sentence, a bomb goes off, as we see it's the Riddler dropping dynamite on them from the top of the lighthouse. House. And as we see the Riddler do this, he says, It was choice, I must say. The cops scurrying for cover like cockroaches. A bag heavy with loot over my shoulder. But the fun stopped there, as a voice says, What are you supposed to be? And on the next page, we see it's Batman asking this. The Riddler then narrates the scene, saying, I read about him in the tabloids. I thought he was just an urban legend. A dystopic folktale like albino alligators in the sewers or the choking Doberman. Batman then asks Edward, what are you dressed as? The question mark? The quiz master? Riddler then throws dynamite at him saying, I'm the Riddler. Batman just punches Edward in the gut with the Riddler saying, he was real all right. Right from the first, he knew how to humiliate me. While Batman punches the Riddler in the face, he says, the Riddler, hmm, I've had it with you theme villains. But as Batman is punching him in the face, the Riddler says, did you forget the dynamite? As he starts laughing, the explosion throws Batman back and allows the Riddler enough time to get away. But there you have it, friends. That is how Edward Nigma became the Riddler all the way up until his first confrontation with the Batman. I think it's a really solid origin, but now let's take a look at some story arcs and publication history. Throughout the golden and silver age of comics, the Riddler wore tight green spandex with black question marks all over it. And of course, he tried to constantly outsmart the dynamic duo. But after the Batman 66 version of the character portrayed by Frank Gorshin, the comic books gave him a green suit with a bowler hat. Then once the Riddler hit the modern age of comic books, he was given a cane after Jim Carrey's portrayal of the character in Batman Forever. But let's be honest, not many people were fond of that version of the character. As for me, I was eight years old when Batman Forever came out, so even though I do realize the movie isn't so great now as an adult, I still have very fond memories of it because I liked it so much as a kid. It was around this time famed B-Taz writer Paul Dini took over Detective Comics and had the Riddler become a good guy of sorts, working alongside Batman and Nightwing as a detective. But clearly that didn't last long. Now all of this was pre-Flashpoint. Post-Flashpoint in DC's New 52, Scott Snyder reinvented the Riddler, who this time worked as an employee of Wayne Enterprises. And he made Riddler the first villain that Batman ever faced. But more on that later. As for actual story arcs, let's dive into some of the greatest hits, if you will. First off, we have the Riddle Factory from Batman Riddler from 1995. In this comic, the Riddler hosts a not-so-friendly TV show that he's broadcasting called The Riddle Factory. How does this game show work, you ask? Well, each contestant is put into a deadly trap that can only be shut down if they answer the riddle correctly. Now, why is the Riddler hosting this deadly game show, you ask? Well, we find out it's all distractions so the Riddler's men could hunt down Don Scarelli's hidden money that Nigma previously found out about. But Riddler wasn't able to find the secret vault that held Scarelli's cash, and of course was outsmarted by the Batman. Another good one is the Primal Riddle from Batman Legends of the Dark Knight issue 109. In this story, the Riddler made what could be considered his greatest death trap ever, which consists of Batman being thrown in a narrow pit that is slowly filling with water. But it doesn't end there. The walls are also electrically wired, and a set of bumpers are the only thing that's keeping the water from touching the walls, meaning any minute, Batman could be electrocuted to death. But come on, the Caped Crusader has to win. So even though Batman is faced with electrocution or drowning, he of course manages to devise a way to escape. Moving on yet again, we have the Riddler Clue Master story from Detective Comics issue 705 through 707. In this story, we see the Riddler initially doesn't like Clue Master as he basically stole his gimmick. So Riddler's henchwoman caught Clue Master and the Riddler tells him, I never saw you as competition, Clue Master. Strictly Bush League. Puzzles were just a cheap gimmick to you, but they are my life. You play at conundrums. To me, they're art, but I'm about to make you part of my master crime. Riddler then straps a bomb to him, at which point he would make Batman chase riddles that would lead to defusing the bomb. This served as a distraction to lead Batman away from the Riddler's real plan, which was to steal a bunch of priceless baseball merchandise. But clearly Batman stops Riddler and his henchwomen and saves Clue Master. After this, the Riddler and Clue Master would team up on occasion. Then of course, the Riddler has been in some of the most iconic Batman stories of all time, like The Long Halloween, where Carmine Falcone hired the Riddler 
to figure out who the holiday killer is. But Carmine becomes impatient with the Riddler and forces him to leave despite several good theories the Riddler had on who the holiday killer was. After this, the Riddler would be attacked by Holiday, but left alive. And said attack was actually planned to line up with April Fool's Day, because as we know in the long Halloween story, every attack happens on a holiday. Then we have another iconic Batman story, Batman Dark Victory, which serves as the sequel to The Long Halloween. In this story, Batman tracks down the Riddler to help him figure out the importance or significance of the lost games of Hangman that are left at the scenes of the Hangman Killer's crimes. And of course, you have Batman Hush, where the Riddler is one of the most crucial parts of the entire story. Long story short, we find out in the story that the Riddler is dying from cancer and luckily was able to find one of Ra's al Ghul's secret Lazarus pits, curing himself unknown to Ra's al Ghul. After this, the Riddler and Tommy Elliot cross paths. Elliot would then ask how he was cured as Elliot's mother is dying. Then from here, a lot more stuff happens and the two become entangled, but the point is the Riddler and Hush are two of the most important villains of this massively iconic Batman story. And if you haven't read it, you need to. Maybe one day we'll do a pull list episode on it. Now there's a lot of other Riddler stories we could talk about because again, he's one of the most prolific villains in all of comics, not just one of the most prolific Batman villains. But I feel like ending this with Scott Snyder's zero year version of the character is very fitting. Like I briefly mentioned earlier, when Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo tackle Batman's New 52 origin, we find out that the Riddler was the first villain Batman ever faced. In this rendition, Riddler worked for Wayne Enterprises. And at this point in time, Bruce Wayne's uncle, Philip K. Moran. Basically, Nigma kills Bruce's uncle, then leaves Wayne Enterprises and causes a massive blackout in Gotham City, taking out all the power. To make matters worse, he does this just before a massive hurricane is about to hit the city. It's a really good story and one of my favorite origins and first outings for Batman. But with that said, it's time for powers and abilities. Like most of Batman's villains, the Riddler doesn't have any superhuman powers, but he is incredibly wealthy and a genius. As far as mind games, puzzles, and manipulations go, he's pretty much the best there is. During the time in comics when he was struck in the head by the Shining Knight's mace and was put into a coma waking up a year later, he no longer had a compulsion for riddles and was now a good guy becoming a private investigator. And during his reform time, he showed that his investigation skills rival that of the Batman. So that tells you all you need to know right there. The Riddler is by no means a physical threat to the Dark Knight, but again, the reason why he's one of Batman's greatest enemies is because of his sheer brilliance as a criminal strategist. He's responsible for putting Batman and Robin in some of the most unique and elaborate death traps the dynamic duo have ever faced. Case in point, the Riddler is widely known as Batman's most intelligent adversary. And as you know, brains often overcomes bronze. But with that said, let's look at some Riddler reading recommendations. If you want to read some good Riddler comics, check out Batman Hush, Batman The Long Halloween, Batman Zero Year, Nigma Consulting Detective, and The Riddle Factory. That's enough to get you guys started. And that's going to bring today's episode of Variant to a close. But if you like this video, check out this one right here. To my left, you're right. And as always, subscribe, like, and comment if you enjoy the channel. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.